let's take a look at something that's moving in a circle. Uh, here we have a spot on a turntable or something that's spinning. And let's say it moves from there to there. And we want to figure out what the speed of the spot is. And so speed, uh, we can figure out by measuring distance traveled and the time. And so the dis distance traveled for speed would be the arc length not the cord that it took, it was here, right? That would be for measuring the average velocity. But for speed, we want the actual distance that went that arc length. And we can figure out what that arc length is if we know angle theta. And so it'd be what fraction of a circle this angle represents. So theta in degrees over 360 degrees, if you like. And then times the circumference, 2 pi r. And so if we want speed, we know that's change in distance over change in time. So it's going to be the arc length over the time. And so that would tell me how fast it's going. That's getting a little complicated, though. Not too bad. A better thing to do, if we had the opportunity anyway, would be to watch the spot go around once. And so if we waited for it to go all the way around then this would look a little easier because the angle would be 360 degrees. Let's first define the time to go around once as the period. It's an important idea. You need to know that. So the time to complete a cycle to go around once is the period. And the symbol is the Greek letter tau. And the speed then, change in distance over change in time, now the change in distance is just the circumference. And then it's over the time, which we're now calling the period. So you get 2 pi r uh, over tau, over the period. How about if we had another spot on here that was also moving? Uh, would it have the same speed? And so it's going to go around in a circle like that. So that's not quite a circle, but you get the idea. It's not, because the radius is less, and so this, the distance it's going is less in the same amount of time though. The period would be the same, right? But there is something that's the same about the motion of both spots in any spot on this object. They have the same period, and they also have the same, not change in distance, but change in angle. And so we're gonna define a new kind of speed called angular speed, which is the change in angle over the change in time. And so if it went around once, the change in angle would be 360 degrees, and the time would be the period. And the advantage of angular speed is that both spots have the same angular speed. So that can come in handy for understanding some of the physics. Let's take a look at this further. Can we convert from angular speed to linear speed? And we can, and it's easier if we use radians instead of degrees. And so angular speed, omega, change in angle over change in time, 2 pi over the period. So the change in angle now, instead of 360 degrees, it's 2 pi radians. You should know there are 2 pi radians in a complete cycle. And if we go back and look at linear speed, the circumference over the period 2 pi r over the period, I'm seeing some similarity here. 2 pi over the period shows up in the speed equation. And so this is omega, so v is equal to omega. I'm not sure I mentioned that symbol is called omega. Uh, it's not a w, it's a Greek letter omega, times r. And so we have another equation, v, the linear speed, is the angular speed times the radius, but you have to make sure that angular speed is measured in radians for this to work. But what the heck is a radian? You should know this from your math class, but sometimes people confuse how many radians are in a quarter circle or a half circle and so on with what a radian really is. A radian is pretty simple. Uh, the angle in radians is the ratio of the arc length to the radius. And so theta in radians is just the ratio of arc length s over the radius, so s over r. So that's a fundamental definition of how to measure angles and radians. And so it's not a surprise there's 2 pi radians in one circle because the arc length for a complete circle would be the circumference 
over the radius, and so those guys go, and so I get two pi radians. A radian is kind of weird, though, because the units are it's really dimensionless. I write radians as a placeholder to remind myself that's what I used. But when you determine an angle in radians, you divide the arc length in meters by the radius in meters, and so it is dimensionless. And so again, the radians is just a placeholder. And so we put the word radian or rad. I usually try and avoid just putting R uh, as a placeholder to remind us we're using radians. Um, let's go further here. And so summarize, these are the three important things you should be able to do. Write down the angular speed equation, this. Don't just jump to this. Some problems you might not be going around in a circle. And so this right here is the equation for angular speed. And if you are going in a complete circle, you can figure that out easily. You should know the equation for linear speed for something going in a, a complete circle. But don't forget, this was the first equation we had in the class, so that's where it comes from. And then we showed how to convert linear speed and angular speed. You need to know this. Those are the fundamental things from this lesson. Let's quickly do an example where you're converting. Sometimes we use radians, sometimes we use degrees. We can use revolutions. There are other ways to measure angles. So let's do a quick example problem. Let's say the period, that's supposed to be a tau there in a different font, is 30 seconds for something going in a circle. Find the angular speed, but we want it in all three different kinds of units here. And so write down this. If you're skipping this step and you're having trouble, that's why. Write that down. And so if I want radians, 2 pi radians over the period, 2 pi radians over 30 seconds, 0.21 radians per second. Pretty easy. If I want it in degrees, well, change in angle over change in time. It's going around once, 360 degrees over the period, 360 over 30 seconds, 12 degrees per second. Or I could start with this and convert that. And so that's going to look like this, 0.21 radians per second. I want to multiply by degrees over radians, because then the radians will cancel out. And I'll be left with degrees per second. So if I multiply by 360, divide by 2 pi, Radians cancel, I get the same thing. But be careful when you use your calculator, put parentheses around that, or you could say this is 180 degrees and how many radians? That would be pi radians. That's a little quicker way of doing it. Uh, but be careful, or maybe just use 3.14 for pi. How about the last one, revs per second? Think of a rev as a way to measure angles. There's 2 pi radians in a circle, 360 degrees in a circle, and 1 rev in a circle. And so the change in angle is 1 rev. That's a measure of a change in angle over 30 seconds. So that makes it pretty simple. Uh, I think there's, I think I have a mistake here. That's 0.033. I'm not going to go back and redo it all. You can. And so uh, 1 over 30 is going to be 0.033. Let's see if I got it right this next one. And so uh, I bet I did. And so let's convert. So if we use angular speed and radians per second, I can multiply by 1. 1 rev equals 2 pi radians. And so the radians would cancel. And we get another incorrect answer, 0 0.033. And so, um, so uh, this is just a quick introduction. This should help you with the homework if you missed class or if you wanted to review.